Welcome to the scattering tutorial of my landscape series. In the last videos we built the shader for our terrain. This time I will show you the most important techniques to distribute assets on our landscape. We start with our landscape from the last videos. But of course this also works with any other object. I've already prepared a few assets that we will use for the video. We are doing this with geometry nodes because I think it's the most efficient way. However, geometry nodes are based on the geometry of the object. And this is a problem in our case. We have a subdivision modifier that changes the mesh of our object. So if we want to keep the details, we need a second mesh without a modifier. Let's switch to solid view mode because we don't need textures right now. This also gives us a much faster viewport. With Alt and D we create a linked copy, which is very important. We can now place our duplicate or move it back to its original position with the right mouse button. We delete the modifier from the copy and call it Scatter or Landscape Scatter. So why we have now made the linked copy here with Alt and D and not with Shift and D? This is because if we go to the edit mode and change the mesh of this landscape, then also the mesh of our duplicate changes. So if we say here, for example, that we want to change something again, let's pull this out here, then it also changes on the other mesh. That way it's a little more flexible. But we will undo this again because our landscape looks quite good as it is. We deactivate our landscape so that only our duplicate is visible, which we use for this. We now want to distribute our assets on it and we do this with geometry nodes. We switch to the Geometry Nodes editor and create a new setup here. We have our object here at the input. This is how it looks originally. In between we can connect nodes, which then changes our mesh. And at the end is the output that makes our adjustments visible. First we create a Distribute Points on Faces node. Now we can already see that points have been distributed on our mesh. We can increase or decrease the number here. However, we don't want points, but instead our assets. With an instance on points node, we can replace the points with our objects. We don't see anything at first because we haven't selected our objects yet. We can do this by creating a collection info node and connecting it. Here we have to select the collection from which we want to use the objects. However, we can also pull in the objects from up here, which is even faster. This way we can connect the instances directly. We have already distributed our assets here, but if we now display the original landscape, the objects are still slightly offset. This is because our objects are not in the center of our world. They are slightly offset. To fix this, so that they are displayed in the right place and only individual objects from the collection are placed, we just have to tick a few boxes. First, reset children, then separate children, and pick instance, so that only single objects will be placed. Here we can control the density for it. That doesn't really look good at first. The instances are all the same size, and rotated in the same direction. In general, everything is very uniform. Here we can rotate them, but they are all still turned in the same direction. We want them all to look different and for this we first need a random value node. We change this to vector and connect it to the rotation socket. But now our instances are also rotated along the x and the y axes, which we don't want. Here in the max values we can select the maximum degree to which the object should be rotated. For the x and the y axes we simply select 0 and increase the value for the z axis or maybe 0.3. I think it looks even better this way. Ok, now we have rotated the instances, but they are all still at the same size. We create another random value node, but this time we leave it on float. We now connect the value to the scale socket and can control the size. 1.7 for the maximum size fits, and here for the minimum size, we might choose 0.4 or something like that.
but the grass in our landscape is now also growing on the walls, which is unrealistic. To get rid of it, we have to make a selection based on the slope, so we need the normal information again, which we get from the normals node. To control the angle to which it should grow, we create a compare node. We set this here to vector, here direction, and here to less than or equal. This goes in at the top, at A, and the result in our selection socket. We also add a 1 here. With the angle slider at the bottom here, we can control the angle up to which we want our instances to be displayed. Next, we want to select not only the slope, but also the height. We also want nothing to grow on top here. This means we need information from the height, which we get from the position node. However, we are only interested in the z-axis of the position, so we create a separate xyz node. We can connect this to the vector socket. To control this selection, we also need a compare node. We leave this on float and set this to less than or equal. We now connect the z-axis to this and our selection socket. We can use the slider here to control the height to which our grass should grow. With these nodes here, we select according to the height. And with these nodes here, we select the slope. We now want to connect the two selections, and this is very easy to do. There are many ways to do this, but we do it with a mixed color node. We already know this from the shader tutorials, and it does the exact same thing here. We set it to darken and connect the two node setups. We connect the mix node to the selection socket and set the factor to 1. And this is we have connected the two selections. We can now distribute our assets according to the height and the slope with just a few clicks and adjust them very quickly. If we want to get even more randomness here, the grass shouldn't grow evenly. In nature, more or less grass would grow in places. We can do this very easily with a noise texture node. Let's start by creating a noise texture node. I will move the other nodes a little to the side so that we have more space. Then we need a color ramp that goes here and we connect it to it. We connect the color ramp to our selection socket and see that the assets are not in order yet. Our noise scale is still far too small and we need to increase the contrast of our color ramp. We can already see that it's changing and we can adjust it a little. We now want to mix this selection with the previous one. So let's copy this dark node. This goes in at the top. This goes in at the bottom. And this goes in a selection socket. So we've connected that again, and if we increase the density, then the grass stays within the noise texture. Sometimes the assets are in the same place and clip. If the density is very high, this often happens. I think you can already see it in a few places. To prevent this, we switch from random to poison disk and get a few new sliders. We set the density a little higher here, and with the slider below we can control the minimum distance between the instances. But I think a millimeter is fine for grass. Now we want the fall off of the density. Currently the density of the grass within the noise texture is the same, which is not realistic. So we want the fall off and we do that very easily. We can duplicate the color ramp directly here. Here we connect everything as before. I move the nodes to the side and make a little more space. We connect this color ramp with the density factor and we already have our fall off and can control it here. So there is a gradient and the landscape is covered in different densities. Our node tree for the grass is finished and now we want to distribute the stones. 
However, we want to place the stones a little differently to the grass. That's why we duplicate the whole node tree here with Shift and D. That way we don't have to build it all again. Of course we connect this to our mesh again. Otherwise we wouldn't have any input and wouldn't see anything. And here we choose the rocks collection instead of grass. And if we connect this here now we see our rocks distributed everywhere. Here we can change the density. Adjust the size here and change it again a little. The rocks should also have a little more space between them than the grass. If we don't like the distribution we can choose a different seed here. We just make a few adjustments so that we like it. To display this together with the grass we need a join geometry node. That goes here. The stones and the grass are now added to the join geometry node. We connect this to the output and see that we have distributed our stones and the grass. And so we can simply add more and more instances if we want to add more objects. To make things a little more clear, we create groups again. If you want to distribute the assets even more controlled and not based on a noise texture, then you can do it with vertex paint. So you can draw where the instances should be and where not. To do this we connect another node to the selection. First need a named attribute node. Now we deactivate our geometry nodes and the actual landscape. Then we switch to vertex paint mode. And create the color attribute here. If we select add, we can paint here where our instances should be placed. Now we switch back to the object mode and display the geometry nodes again. The landscape too. And here at the named attribute node we can now choose the selection that we have drawn. We connect this to the selection socket and see our grass. We can now switch to vertex paint mode at any time and paint more grass. Or if we switch to subtract here, we can delete it again. But here I want to do it with the noise texture. So I will link it back to that. In the next video, I will build the landscape for my next animation and use all the techniques shown in the last videos. I hope you could learn something in my landscape tutorial series and see you next time.